Hey, what's up everybody? Russ with RWGresearch.com here. Quick little product review from Revo Point. This is the Revo Point Mini 3D Scanner. So currently as recording this, the Kickstarter is going to be going live soon. So if you've been thinking about getting a 3D scanner, go check this one out. I've been messing with it and it works really well for what I've been playing with. Um, I did a review <clears throat> not too long ago on a Rev Point uh, Pop 2. All right, so the difference between the two, I'm gonna give you just a little bit of like differences. It's a little bit tighter on the tolerance of scanning. The actual uh, scan volume is it's like you can get a smaller scan volume. You can also, um, it also is scanning a little bit closer to give you that higher resolution and that smaller object size. This one really is designed for indoor use only where the other one you could do outdoor use. Um, this one is scanning with blue light instead of the uh, what I believe was infrared on the other one, so it's a visible light. Um, it's a little bit lighter, and um, that's, that's basically the overview. Um, now, my current version is actually a prototype, so it doesn't do color, but the, the full version will do color. So what I'm going to show you today is just scanning some objects with this, see what kind of detail we can get out of it, and uh, kind of go from there. And yeah, so let's just jump right on into it. All right, so uh, here's the box, but first I'm going to open up this one, which is the actual uh, scanner rotating bed assembly, which is nice. So last time we had a 3D printed top with a small base. This is a full base, so 12 volt in. Uh, this one is not battery operated. The other one was. Then you got your power adapter here, which I'm going to leave out. I have another 12 volt power brick, so we'll just plug it in, turn it on, boom. Easy. So now we can actually do our unboxing. So here's what's inside of this guy. You've got your uh, your fun stuff here. Your your black background. You've got some sticky tape so you can put things on there without them falling over if they're odd objects. And then you've got your markers, which are nice. So inside the box we got a little man. So last time we had a big man. Okay, I'm going to show it to you, just so you know what it looks like. Here's the scale difference of kind of what they're thinking that you can scan for size wise. All right, so these guys are pretty well the same, but this one's really big. This is the one sent with the, the, the mini, all right? And that's because you can scan a smaller object with more detail. So we will do that. You've also got your cables. So you've got uh, USB A to micro USB 3. All right, so USB A, regular cable, that's the one I've been using. Then you've got a. USB-C to USB-A, and then you've also got a USB-C to a USB-3, um, a B 3.0, okay? Uh, you do have a little phone adapter holder like on the other one that we've looked at. Um, I'm not going to use this guy. I am only going to use that one. Uh, it also comes with a stand here, so again, a, tele a telescoping stand. All right, it's got the feet on it, so you can set your set your objects up, and it's got this quick connect, so you can unscrew this quick connect. You can attach your um, tall thing, put your phone on there, and so you can do uh, 3D scanning. Oh, that just goes straight on the scanner. All right, so that's what that's for, is for clamping your phone in there when you're doing scans where you're not stationary. Um, now, this particular one has a prototype. I'm only doing stationary scanning. Now, this scanner, because it's a prototype, does not have the glass on the front. The final product will have a glass on the front. It also has a color camera. Currently, this one does not. This is just a prototype for purposes of review. And so far, I'm really liking this. Um, the visible light, I think, scans better than the infrared, but that's just my opinion. Uh, so that's everything in the box. Let's go ahead and put all this stuff back, set up the scanner, and do some scanning. All right, so I got my scanner plugged in. <clears throat> the blue light is on. That just means it's waiting and ready for the software to be loaded. Once the software is up and running, we're good. These do have nice thumb screws, which is really nice. Keeps it in there without falling out. Um, you do also need a little bit better computer uh, than the other um, Pop Mini 2, or the Pop 2, I should say. This is the Mini. So they also sent me these two cans of spray. These are pretty neat. These are evaporating 3D scanning spray. So the blue one is a short time duration, up to four hours. I find it to be more like two hours because I'm not coating it heavily, I guess. 
uh, uh, this one is up to tw uh, 12 to 24 hours, so you can purchase these uh, online. They are a little expensive, but I will say they make a dramatic difference when scanning objects. There's quite a few objects that I tried to scan. I just couldn't scan unless I absolutely sprayed them. There are other types of sprays, but this is pretty neat because it uh, evaporates. The only thing I found that I didn't like about this is it can actually cover up a lot of the detail. If you heavily spray it, it can get into cracks you know, in certain areas that could cause you a little bit of, of, of trouble. Uh, or if you're trying to get that super great detail. <clears throat> so, recommend the spray. Um, let's go ahead and look at a few things here on this scanner. All right, so I've plugged in the scanner. I've opened up the uh, scanning application. This is called Revo Scan. It is a little bit different than their other uh, uh, software version. I believe these are actually different for the different product. Maybe they'll blend them together. I'm not 100% sure, but it's very similar, um, but I find it to actually work a lot better. So I'm gonna just stick the little man on the table here. All right, so we got the table here, and we got the scanner. Now you can see the visible blue light. Now I'm told that this is not good to be looking at, so I tend to set my scanning system up where I'm over here in the back and I put my scanner this direction because I find that it actually kind of hurts my eyes just a little bit um, if I'm pointing it at my face. So keep that in mind or put the scanner in a dark box, I don't know, something, but keep that in mind. I personally don't really like looking at this blue light. It's pretty intense. So face it away from you and it hasn't really bothered me. So here's the system. I'm going to do a new scan. You have the options here um, to do different things when you're trying to scan. This is not the finalized software, but you can get a quick overview of what we're doing. Obviously, I don't, I can't do colorful because this is a prototype. The, fi the final one will do a color, from what I'm told. And in this case, I'm doing feature, which means it'll pick up the object as I set it down. I'm going to go ahead and do high accuracy, and I'm going to hit OK. And then it gives me the ability to set up a few parameters. I can fine-tune the uh, uh, the brightness over here, <clears throat> basically like the sensitivity. I can remove the plane. Um, if I had the RGB camera up here, that's where it'd be. Then you've got this play and stop button, and you can set a timer. I personally like a zero timer, but if you're using the push button on the back of the device here, <clears throat> you basically want to set a timer so you can push it, allow the scanner to quit bumping around, and then it'll start scanning. So that's why the timer, I believe, is even there. So let's just go ahead and do a quick scan. I'm going to hit play. All right. <clears throat> Picking up my object. Looks pretty good. I'm going to go ahead and just let it scan all the way around here. And then what I'm going to do is set it on its side and be able to scan the sides, the backs, the bottoms, the places that I can't get to. So I've actually already scanned this model and a few other models. I'll give you a brief overview here. So I'm going to hit the pause, all right, now when I hit the pause it stops scanning and I can actually kind of look at it in 3D, I can zoom in, I can see all the points, I can see I missed the head a little bit, I got some stuff on the bottom. So I'm actually going to take the model and I'm going to set it on its side and try to get the rest of this stuff. So it's sometimes what I've learned so far on this preliminary software, <clears throat> if you hit play and it doesn't pick it up, sometimes if you just leave it and let it go for a minute, it'll pick it up. So there, now we're getting the, uh, the, the top of the head, and then we'll get some of that underhang part. And uh, I'm just going to keep doing this until I get the uh, full scan. I'm going to keep flipping it around, and I'll, say, I'll spare you the time, but this is basically the method of the scanning. So let me go ahead and finish this whole thing, I'll show you what it looks like. Wait, is it that? Huh? Is it that what's on there? Yeah. What? Right. I'm scanning it. <laughs> so we've scanned the object. I'm done scanning. Um, point cloud looks pretty good. There's a few things floating out in space, which is usually the markers on the table. So usually those get cleaned up. But everything looks pretty good. So now what I'm going to basically do is you hit this uh, stop button and it says complete, cancel, restart. Uh, it says, do you want to uh, fuse it immediately or not? I'm going to hit yes. So complete. So it says point cloud fusing. And there's a progress bar down here that is telling me how far along we got. So I'll let it run and see what it looks like. All right, so there we go. It's fused the point cloud. This is kind of what we get. This is what it looks like. It looks really good. There's a few like little uh, features hanging out here. 
like around here but I think those will get cleaned up once we uh, turn it into a solid model so I presume we go ahead and just try that so you have a couple of options here currently on your solid model managing when you actually go to make it um, you can close the holes you can uh, um, denoise it right so I, I would prefer to denoise it and get rid of some of this nonsense around here um, sometimes I couldn't change these, but I think that's something with the software. Oh, I gotta do manual. There we go. So mesh quality. I'm gonna go pretty high on the mesh quality, but I'm gonna denoise quite a lot. And I'm also gonna fill in holes. So basically hit the button, and uh, it's gonna mesh it. And we'll see what it looks like when it's done. Alright, there it was. It took about, I don't know, maybe a minute or so. It wasn't terribly long. So there's our model. You can see what it looks like. There's a few defects here and there, and I think remeshing it uh, can clear some of those things up, you know, depending on what options you have. Plus, uh, I've also noticed that sometimes when you do um, mesh inside this particular program, it doesn't work as good as if you do it uh, elsewhere. So if you take the point cloud and fuse it, mesh it, all that stuff somewhere else, sometimes that can give you better results. Um, all right, so I just wanted to show you guys real quick. One of these uh, I scanned uh, earlier, and one of them I just scanned for you right now. You can see they're pretty comparable, but depending on how I meshed them or how I exported them and made them a solid, um, it changes your results slightly. But uh, there's your there's your overview of uh, scanning this guy, and uh, yeah, that's him right there. Poor lighting. Sorry about that. Anyway, so let's go on. See what else we got. Results. Um, so yeah. Now, I'm gonna show you actually how to use this uh, spray real quick, and then we're gonna scan some other objects. So, let's go check it out. So just for reference here, you can see this is black on this side a little bit, more white on the other side. Bring it over here. You can see the like the light the black in there? It's actually not quite enough for it to scan. I'm still getting a few spots. And uh, there's little black spots that are still showing through the white spray. And you know you can see there's still holes here. But I didn't try too hard to get all the wires and such. I think I could have got them better if I would have tried harder, but I think that's pretty good if you were just trying to get a model of uh, something to put in CAD without having to draw the whole thing up. So, not terrible, but not the best. Let's see what happens if we try to mesh it as a solid. Alright, so this is after I've kind of made the point cloud. And uh, it's actually pretty darn good. If I go trying to make this into a solid, it probably isn't going to turn out very nice. Um, but let's try it anyway. But I could take this right here and it would be pretty good for modeling if I was trying to build an RC airplane. I'd be able to at least see the physical size of the motor and such. Let's try Alright, so here it is after we have meshed it as a solid. And you know what? That is actually really good. Like, I could totally use this in my model and find out you know, dimensions and such. I, I can't complain too much. That's, that's really nice. Even the wires are kind of there. Not perfect, but I also didn't spend a tremendous amount of time trying to make it perfect. So, that's pretty good. Alright, this is what it looks like with the uh, spray, blue spray. And uh, you can see it's pretty well like a white layer. So, so far so good. Alright guys, so I've scanned Bingo here. He's starting to fade off and here's the point cloud. So now we're going to fuse this thing into a solid model, but this looks really good, even got the inside of the feet. So we're going to go over here and boop, fuse it, mesh it, whatever you want to call it, we're going to do it. Let's see what happens. Alright, there's our final model. So that looks pretty good. Some probably could work on the meshing, make it better, but that's pretty good. Cannot complain. Alright, you can see how Bingo's starting to evaporate you can you know kind of wipe this stuff off too but it does evaporate 
So slowly, it's supposed to last for four hours, but really lasts for like 20 minutes or something like that. For in my, well, I'm not I'm not heavily coating it either. I'm trying to save the spray, not over spray. All right, so after spraying this and kind of smelling it and kind of knowing what I'm what I'm smelling, I, I wanted to know if this was like really strong or chemical smell. But actually, it's it actually smells a little sweet, and it really doesn't bother me even having it indoors here. You know, this is like pretty heavy on here, but it really does not smell that bad. Um, which... All right, so bingo has dried out. It's been about an hour and a half, but his feet are still a little white. And if you look at the motor, it dried out pretty good. There's a few spots up here kind of coated, but look at the bottom. So apparently the airflow, this has been against the table and hasn't been getting much air. So apparently the air really makes this stuff evaporate faster. But kind of interesting. All right, here's the motor that we scanned. Um, it actually looks really good. Totally, uh, totally usable. I mean, the shaft looks really good. I didn't get down in the holes really deep because uh, I didn't uh, expect it to, so I didn't try. Well, got the wires pretty well, even though I didn't try super hard to get the wires. You know, you can see some of the detail on the uh, screw heads, but some of this was that thick coating. When you spray it real thick, it gives gives you some fits. Now, this wouldn't scan at all, like at all, whenever I uh, tried to scan it without spraying it. So this is an object which was unseeable and turned out extremely well after spraying it. Here is uh, the model of Bingo. Bingo. <laughs> and Bingo turned out really well. I'm pretty content with Bingo. Can't complain. I think uh, it's totally acceptable. It even got like the little paws on his feet and uh, the hexagons. I did. I could have spent more time getting these details a little better. I think it would have picked up under the arms better. But uh, I didn't spend a terrible amount of time trying to get this to be super perfect. So I think the more you, the more time you take on it, I think you could get better, even better details. But that's pretty good. And then lastly, we got the dinosaur. And the dinosaur, I didn't spend nearly as much time on trying to get perfect. So the hands and the long tail didn't quite get there. I also could have sprayed him a lot more. I didn't spray him near as much as I should have. But again, without spraying him, I couldn't get it at all. The branding on the bottom did kind of get picked up. But uh, you can't like see the the written detail, but you're talking pretty small, pretty small detailed resolution when you get down there. So yeah, can't complain. Uh, seems to work really well. But uh, that's your overview. Let me give you my final thoughts. Bingo right there. Oh hi, Lily. <laughs> All right, so that's been your overview. Lily's been helping me out a little bit, hanging out, waiting for me. So that is the Revo Point Mini. And uh, I can't complain, it's working pretty well for me so far. Um, even though this is a prototype, it's still on. Even though this is a prototype, um, it doesn't have the glass front, doesn't have the uh, RGB camera. Um, it has the same processor as the other one, which uh, if you're curious, I'm going to let you go read it yourself. But I will tell you, it is a dual core ARM Cortex A7. So that's what's running inside here. Um, it doesn't get too hot. This, the other model seems like it gets real hot. This one's pretty good, thermally, for me anyway. So there's your overview. Um, go check it out right now. Uh, the Currently, as recording this video, the uh, Kickstarter is on, so you might get yourself a pretty good deal for the early bird specials and stuff. So um, go check out when that gets launched. It'll be like a day after I release this video. Or uh, go to their website uh, in the future if the, you're watching this later. But yeah, you think it's pretty cool? Yeah. What would you use it for? Uh, I don't know. You don't know? What would you want to scan? Uh, a small airplane. A small airplane. <laughs> yeah, boy. All right. That sounds like fun. Yeah. Like a little one, like this big? Yeah. Oh, let's go find one. Let's try. Yeah. Peace and love. God bless. Read your Bible more. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Bye. Bye. You guys, bye. You boy.